Good afternoon. Have a seat. Have a seat. Uh, you come from uh, Bihar, Saharsa, and we find that uh, history of India, modern East Asia, Europe. Saint Stephen College. You are coming from very good. BA you did in 2018. Since then you are preparing for services, I suppose. Mm, and uh, uh, watching documentaries. Ha, um, can I call you Selja or Miss Selja? What? Are you better? Relax, relax absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So we are little advanced in age, so you have to speak loudly for us to hear. Okay. Uh, yeah, little more loud. That would be nice, right? Um, I find you find uh, I find that you passed out in history function students. Yes. And uh, after that, you have been apparently yes. bringing in valor of the people who fought for the freedom of this country, bringing out issues of national security issues. Okay, which has been neglected in the past. Okay, do you feel it's the right move? The something which was neglected in the past now being brought in. Yes, I think to a certain extent, yes, it is the right move because we need to know the 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 contribution of our freedom fighters and the other historical figures who give a lot of information about what had happened in the past and what can be improved in the future. So, in that sense, yes, I think reading about the rebellions and the revolts do play an important role in education as such of an individual. Okay. Uh Little controversial, but it's only from the examination point of view. People say that you know we could have got our freedom much early if we had not followed the non-violence, but we followed the path of violence. How do you justify this statement? So yes, yes, it can be said that it could have happened earlier, but then we could say that the after effects would have been very different. So if we had been doing it through a military coup, then the history and then the future would have had an, a lot of Im impact of that event. So in that sense, I believe that as a democracy, we have been uh, one of the largest democracy. And so non-violence in that sense really plays a major role in, in making the nation as we are today. Constitution was made and some amendments were made to the preamble a little later. What are those amendments? According to the 42nd Amendment Act, the words secular, socialist, and I think integrity was added in 1976. Why? Why was it brought in? So, uh, the secular elements was already there, but to make it more uh, vocal or to make it more, as, as such, to make it more um, identical to the constitution, it was added, but it was already present in terms of the articles of, of, from 25th to 20, 30th that deals with the religious freedom and the socialist principles we are which are already incorporated in the directive principles of state policy if you become a civil servant your aim will be to work as per the constitution or work as per the direction of the political so as a civil servant my work would be according to the constitution of india so what will you do when it is being there is a conflict so if there is a conflict then i would first give priority to what is there in the constitution, if there is a clear directive that says that it should be done according to the constitution, I would follow that. And then I look at the other aspects of that particular problem. Keep that always in mind. Okay. Shelja, now with every uh, coming election, you keep on listening a lot of announcement for freebies, free electricity, free water. Now, what are your views about it? Sir, my views would be about the fact that these freebies have a lot of impact on the fiscal policy and the fiscal uh, deficit of a particular state or country. So then the government needs to look at it critically, whether they, they should be given or there are other elect electoral manifesto that they could possibly give. So in certain extent, I think freebies should be limited. But then to certain low, low income people, they can be given, but it should be. But can you do it? Can you stop anybody announcing freebies before election? So I think uh, we cannot really tell the government to stop it, but 
yes there should be dialogue or for policy framework to really have a this so dialogue is different policy framework is different yes can you can you convince a politician by dialogue not announcing freebies yes sir you try but <laughs> i will sir if, if given a chance uh, what are the say if i say india is a vibrant democracy what are the features of indian vibrant democracy what we call it a vibrant democracy so i would say a vibrant democracy in terms of how the voters are belonging to different different class and different caste and different re regional and religious background so one is the elections regular impartial fair elections one what else the other would be in terms of the panchayati raj system the importance of uh, grassroots level democracy and how it plays a major role in then furthering the democratic principles what else if the government goes straight if the government goes straight who stops government from going straight straight or straight straight away away from away from democratic norms who stops government i think so the people of the country through through the elections you have a provision of judicial review judiciary isn't it a feature of a vibrant democracy uh, yes okay okay tell me one thing why do you give vaccine in muscle in in this region say so corona vaccine you must have also got this. they they always given this upper arm in this is called deltoid region deltoid muscle is there i think sir uh, but to the limited knowledge i have i think the covid vaccine was intramuscular vaccine so it was given no the intra there are lot of other muscles also why only this muscle even if it is intramuscular so maybe it is easier or it is convenient to give it here maybe but yes. i i have to look at it okay what what is a vaccine so it is a so it is a i could say it is a chemical composition of a product which induces immunity response through to a particular disease for which it is made so is a chemical is a chemical product or is a biological product so i think it can be a chemical or a biological give me give me some example of chemical vaccine how would a chemical vaccine have antigen yes yes it it, it would be a biological but can you tell me some vaccine which is not taken by parental route I mean, which is taken by oral route. In the oral yes. polio. Yes. Now, polio is a what kind of disease? Polio is. So, polio is a viral disease. How does it spread? So, it it is a viral disease, and then it affects the. I think it affects the movement of a individual. No, how does it spread? How does it transmit? So, like corona transmits through. you know air or droplets or whatever it is. yes yes it it can spread through droplets as well as through air also are you sure no sir i it spreads through droplets and through blood it's a water borne disease it is spread through uh, dirty food or dirty water yes you are interested in i'm seeing uh, archaeological discoveries so who discovered pompeii when was it discovered yeah as far as archaeology is concerned or or the late it was a very very famous uh, city buried under the mount vesuvius uh, volcanic eruption no when was it discovered that there was this whole city there i think i have to look at it i do not okay all right uh, in india can you tell me the oldest archaeological find Ma'am, I think in India, Robert Bruce Foot find the first Paleolithic uh, axe tools and the Paleolithic remains mm -hmm. in the Pune region. Pune region. There is also not far from New Delhi, Mangar Bani, no? Okay, you read up about that. All right. Now uh, you have also given foreign service as your uh, um, option, one of your options, right? Uh, what do you know about uh, Indian women in the foreign service? Are they enough? Are they well represented? I I think, ma'am, to certain extent now they have been well represented, but more improvements could be made. 
you have any idea of how many men are there in the service and how many women? Portion, I'm not ma'am, I'm aware of exact figure. Okay. Uh, how many women heads of missions are there at the moment, ambassadors? No. A rough guess. No, I, I, I cannot guess. You also have to look at the gender equality when you think that out of uh, 33 foreign secretaries, so far there have only been three women foreign secretaries. Do you have any idea who was the first uh, woman foreign secretary? I think I'm not new for my Rao as Chokila Ayur. Yes, yes. Uh, you've heard of Malabar exercises? Yes, ma'am. What is it briefly, please? It is a joint exercise between India, US, and Japan in the Indo Pacific region. And it has gained quite prominent uh, importance in the recent times due to the quad summit also it is seen as somewhat complementing the whole quad aims so uh, got one more country no it began as three it, is, uh, it has also got australia yes in the last where where was the last uh, exercise held in 2021 was it around the Jap japan region but i am not go on Guam, yes, in, in Pacific region, yeah. Why is it called Malabar exercise? Ma'am, maybe because Malabar as a coast holds a lot of importance in India. It started the first from the Malabar coast, which was very scenic and beautiful. So they named the exercise Malabar exercise. Okay. You know anything about the moon missions, Chandrayaan? Yes, ma'am, I've read what I'll try to Tell me briefly. We've had how many so far? We've had two. Yeah, how were they? Were they successful? Ma'am Chandrayaan 1 was in collaboration with NASA, I would say. And, and it, it had a lot of importance in terms of the discovery of water remains on the moon. And the Chandrayaan 2 mission, uh, I think it, it did fail. In it crashed. Landing. Yeah, yeah. while it was landing, no? it crashed. Okay. And the third uh, mission, when is it scheduled for? I think, ma'am, it is scheduled in 2024. Yeah, it was scheduled for late 2022, but the pandemic has uh, delayed it. What are unicorns? There was a report about how the first quarter this year, 14 new unicorns have been added. Ma'am, unicorns are the startups which has a valuation of around $1 billion in the economy. So, in that sense, they show the vibrancy of the entrepreneurial activities in the economy. And they are, they've got a global identity now, no? Can you name some prominent ones? There are some which are led by women. I think one startup I remember was Mishu, I think. Misho. Naika. Naika is very, very popular. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, you must have heard of Ram Chandra Yes, sir. Uh, why is he so critical of the government? What is his concept? Sir, the reason I cannot say why is he critical, but he does talk about a lot of other uh, uh, ways through government. How can the governance in the country could be improved? But I cannot say why is he really being. No, no, he has a point of view. What does he say? So that I will have to read. What, what is the subaltern view of history? Sir, so, subaltern view of history talks about uh, the history from the point of view of those who had been left out by the earlier historiography of history. So one way is that um, in terms of the freedom struggle, we have all, always looked, overlooked the Chori Chora incident and how peasants have a major role to play in that incident. So that is subaltern view of history, I would say, through an example. Okay, current level of our uh, syllabus for this or in uh, schools rather, there is also a view that the uh, outlook on history itself has to change. What is that? Sir, uh, we need to look at gender issues and we need to look at these uh, lower class people and their issues from a more broader point of view. We have gone past that. What I am asking you now is now there is a attempt at rewriting history and all. 
What is that? So that issue is about how um, history as a subject has focused a lot on the medieval history and Delhi Sultanate, the Mughal history, and we have in a way ignored the ancient history. So there is one view that talks about that. Have you heard of another author? I asked this question of others also because I am thinking. Vikram Sampat, have you heard of him? What is the controversy he has got with him? Sir, he, he has published two articles on Pandit Veer Savarkar and there had been books. books and there had been allegations of plagiarism by him to, by certain historians in the US itself and in India also. So that is the issue. Have you heard of uh, Competition Commission of India and the Competition Act? What does it uh, look at and what is it supposed to so the aims of uh, Competition Commission of India is to prohibit the monopoly in the economy, how certain institutions could be prevented from having a monopoly over the economy or any other aspects of society. Anything to do with Google on this? Yes, I can say uh, to a certain extent how Google is seen as monopolizing the... On what issue? So I think in terms of how uh, social media or... Uh, the news in terms of predatory practices in terms of not making available the value for the print and electronic and taking the use item good but uh, why did you do your post graduation Sir. in delhi university very rarely from delhi something which you could stop at that place Yes, and that is one thing, but I've always planned to sit for civil services, though it took more time than I expected, but that was my aim, always. What are major sources of uh, ancient history in India? So the major sources are both uh, material remains, the archaeology, along with the written records. In, in written records, we have uh, inscriptions, then we have... Uh, uh, historical records, we have secular writings, we have religious writings, so all those constitute the... What has been, of course, uh, Megasnes, uh, what has been written by him, does it uh, really make a source for ancient history? Sir, uh, Megasthenes Indica, which talks about the Mauryan Empire, it gives a lot of information on the aspects which are not dealt with in other sources. So the four class system which was present in the modern times along with a lot of information about the political system that existed. Which year he came to India and wrote his travelogue? Which language he wrote? The exact year, I don't remember. Language. Language you must have known. Language, I think it was in Greek. Greek. Yes. And uh, which language uh, Huen Sang wrote? So he wrote in Chinese. Mandarin or Mandarin? <laughs> Approximately how many years he lived in India? Sir so Yuan Sang, I think, lived for 40 years. No, but I think seven years. But then I have to look. Oh, I think six to seven years. And uh, which university he was working with? So he worked with Nalanda University. Give some very great personalities from Bihar their names? So the first name would be Chakravarti Ashok Samrat who did talk a lot about the secular notions during that time and the second name would be Ajat Shatru who, who, Thoda zor se. Ajat Shatru who established the Patliputra as the kingdom of Vihar. The, uh, the other names would be the names of Gupta Empire, the Samudra Gupta, Skand Gupta. What was the headquarter for Samudra Gupta? The so headquarter was Raj Patliputra. You are forgetting Kautilya? Yes, Kautilya. Was the Chandragut Maurya guru tha? When Sang, what did he do? I mean, what for he came and what uh, followed his uh, journey? So he came as a part of Buddhist mission to India. He came to read about Buddhism during that time. And along with that, he wrote the book. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm forgetting the name of that book, but he talks about the religious uh, 
characteristics of the times along with he gives information on the political system during the travelogue he wrote i don't know whether there was any specific name of the book he wrote anyway so what did he go do when he returned he said the name of the book was see you key some what was see you key something and then it translates into something else in india so what uh, what did he do while returning to china so that i'll have to no what i meant was did he carry with him some literature or anything he carry a lot of literature from the nalanda university and what happened to that literature it is stored in china and then it is said that in china buddhism as a as a religion flourished because of the works of yuan sang and one other i think every document was translated into mandarin for years the translation work went on and that uh, contributed towards buddhism spread in china you uh, uh, this uh, so far chinese uh, history is concerned have you heard of marco polo yes sir he was also a traveler in 12th century he came to india in 12th century or 14th century 13th century he made two trips to chinese empire who was the china chinese emperor at that time and uh, uh, what happened what is the highlight of marco polo where from did he come sir i do not remember the chinese emperor venetian but i think okay. it, during the time of tang dynasty i think he went to china during the tang dynasty but who was the emperor but i do not remember the name of that i think it was kublai khan grandson of uh, chenggis khan what is his contribution i mean to uh, the interaction between europe and uh, Ch- china of that time he describes the trade of the times the economy especially he talks about the trade from the red sea to the persian gulf region so in that sense he gives the name of the commodities of import and export and and mostly focuses on the economic history because at did that time the silk road or some other yes a silk road did he come to visit Ch- uh, india also sir he visited south india i believe but uh, there was some uh, some 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 people say that okay they say that uh, kublai khan requested him to bring some uh, uh, padris the christian uh, clerics and in the second uh, trip he did carry some with him but on the way they were so much harassed they ran away and came back they say that if uh, they had reached uh, kublai khan perhaps china would not have been buddhist it would have been christian do you agree with uh, merely k- k- taking a few padris clerics christian clerics would have made the difference i i would say sir it, in certain regions it could have spread but as a mass movement that could not have been possible because the they- mongols are known for a particular Uh, warfare what is the highlight of that warfare you know he the chenggis khan ran over a lot of europe and asia mongolians are said to have mastery over the central asian steppes horses horses yes sir and it is said that in the medieval times due to their expertise over this particular uh, horse what? war and gorilla warfare they re- overran over a large part thank you your interview is over uh, shelja i will give you a little bit of feedback you are b- bright so the first one is that uh, go through the cd that will be given to you or pen drive and um, go through if uh, something can be improved in our opinion you are doing very good only thing is you don't have to lean forward while talking the you, you don't have to need uh, uh, do that in upsc because the room will be small uh, one third of it okay so anyway you will be near the chair so you are doing very well you are confident you are knowledgeable and um, this is your uh, third attempt in appearance and uh, in- uh, interview which attempt the first attempt first attempt only uh, this will be the first attempt 
on uh, 18th May. Still, uh, months time, and uh, we suggest that uh, you put in a lot of hard work on things we already know. Don't take up any new subject, but accept the um, you know current affairs. There, every day new things are happening. You have to be thorough. You have to be understanding the currents behind the you know, events, the dialogues. India, US dialogue, if it is there, what are the undercurrents? That has to be understood. India, China, why, why it is, uh, has come to such a sorry pass that uh, it is difficult to contain China by any nation? Even China, US is finding difficult to contain them. Okay. And then uh, uh, you have a eye contact with the members and chairperson that's a good habit and uh, it shows your confidence and uh, you are almost dressed almost only thing is we were a bit intrigued why you gave ifs later than income tax so you prepare yourself i think this question might have been asked already no, no it uh, didn't but, I, but uh, it will come i am seeing ifs always down the list so no, i don't <laughs> no, no. why da, uh, inter, irs ke bhi niche ja raha hai wo chinta ki baat hai so anyway no, you have to prepare for this you see obviously everybody cannot know everything but to that extent uh, your knowledge is quite wide and uh, deep as well so to that extent we are quite happy with that part of your personality test it is a personality test not an interview yeah. always keep that in mind try to speak little louder little louder yeah. you know practice ah. and um, uh, things about your uh, district you should know things about bihar mm -hmm. you already know about uh, Gupta dynasty and Maurya dynasty, but forgetting Kautilya was a <laughs> practical, yes. practical mistake. <laughs> uh, he, he was the king maker, king maker, ma'am. He was the. No, no, you don't have to give any any explanation. I'm just. And uh, you want to ask anything from the board? You want to ask anything? Not any particular, but I think I have to revise a lot on science and technology. Okay, go ahead. All the best to you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.